Today we're going to be talking about triaxial stress. Okay. And triaxial stress, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z are non-zero. So we're, we're kind of leaving the plane stress condition slightly by allowing this to be non-zero. But tau xy, tau xz, tau yz, they are all zero. OK, and so now what ends up happening here if we plot a fourth element piece of material, let's say, a cube. <clears throat> let's say this is the x, y, z. Okay, so we have sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. Sigma Z coming out down here, let's say, Sigma Y, and Sigma X. Okay, now, what we can do with triaxial stress is we can rotate this cube now with respect to each of the three axes. So we can rotate the cube with respect to the X axis, right? We can rotate it like this. When you rotate with respect to an axis, you have a plane stress condition with respect to the stress components that are not dependent on that axis. So for example, if you rotate about the x-axis, right, some angle theta with respect to rotation about the x-axis, sigma x stays constant, right? But sigma y and sigma z now can be combined to determine the normal and shear stress at that new angle theta. And so what this means is you can draw a more circle for triaxial stress, let's say, by plotting sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. They're all principal stresses, so they're going to all be on the x-axis. Okay, let's just assume that they're oriented like just for argument's sake. Okay. Um, then we can draw three circles, right? We can draw this circle, this circle, and then the big circle. So the big circle corresponds to rotating the cube about the y-axis because it involves sigma x and sigma z. So this is rotation about y. This circle here on the left corresponds to a rotation about the z-axis. And then the circle, the small circle on the right, corresponds to a rotation about the x-axis. And so if you want to know the maximum shear stress, it would be this point right here, which would correspond to rotating the, about the y-axis an angle 45 degrees, and you would get your tau. So if you want to know tau max for, for triaxial stress, you need to compute this tau max, this tau max, and this tau max, and determine which one is greater. That's how you determine tau max for triaxial stress. OK, there are other topics that are in the book that I would encourage you to look at. For example, Hooke's Law is really nothing special. It's just a series of equations that you need to be familiar with. Dilatation doesn't change. Right? Dilatation doesn't change. And then there's strain energy, which would be worth just looking at that. Okay. But I won't spend a lot of time on triaxial stress. I think the most important concept that you need to understand is that you can rotate a stress element in triaxial stress about each of the three axes 
to determine maximum shear stresses using three superimposed Morse circles.